Hello everyone, welcome to CyberScoop TV. Greg Otto, your managing editor here. We're coming to you from the floor of the 2018 RSA conference. I'm talking with Greg Tuhill, the president of Six Terrorist Federal Group and Brigadier General in the Air Force, former US CISO. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Greg. So, talk to me about the things that you are concentrating on at Six Terra. I know Six Terra does a lot about the perimeter and how the perimeter has changed over the past couple of years. Well, thanks for that. You know, frankly, we found that uh, the perimeter as we knew it is is gone. Everybody is now the perimeter, and uh, we're taking at Six Terra a zero trust model and an identity centric approach to taking a look at better securing your information, regardless of where it is. It could be on premise. It could be in one of our uh, data centers uh, co-located, or it could be in the cloud. So what we're doing is, is we're working towards giving our clients, uh, in both public and private sector, the ability to secure their information regardless of where it is. And how has that message resonated inside federal agencies? Because I know federal agencies, there's been a strong push to the cloud, and they deal with large expansive networks, so it has to be somewhat of a hybrid cloud, so I'm sure that that sort of thing, and talking about that the perimeter is everywhere, fits in exactly with where they want to go. I, I think so, and you know, as we go and we talk to folks and we show them the software-defined perimeter technology, which incidentally was kick-started by DARPA to deal with some fundamental flaws in TCP IP, okay. um, you know, it resonates with them because they realize that with TCP IP, you connect first and then you authenticate. Cyber operators know that that causes other problems, okay. unintended consequences. So with software-defined perimeter technology, you authenticate up front and then only connect what you're authorized to see. And for less than the price of a CAC card, you can provide that capability. And that resonates extremely well for departments and agencies who don't necessarily want to rip out what they've already got. They want to make what they have simpler and easier to use and more effective against a very hostile nation state criminal groups or e even the inadvertent, careless, negligent, or indifferent user. Right, and that visibility has got to be a big selling point because I've been talking you know, to both public and private sector people out here at the show, and visibility is one of the big things this year. Everybody wants to be able to see the network at any point. Yeah, absolutely, and having the ability to answer questions like what's on my network, who's on my network, and what's going on on my network, and visualize it in a very simple way and be able to leverage my SIM and other type of technologies. That's something that our company does in a very unique and powerful way. And I'm very excited as I come into this show and I'm working with my federal partners to introduce six terrorist technologies to them. So I want to draw from your old jobs and talk a little bit about uh, election security. We've yeah. seen a lot of things going on in the past couple months election uh, infrastructure designated as critical infrastructure, and we've seen DHS allocate some resources to help states upgrade their election technology. Do you think that we're moving in the right direction when it comes to what needs to be done by the federal government and the state and local governments when we're talking about securing elections? Well, I really congratulate DHS for what they've done thus far, but you know, as you and I have previously talked, I believe that uh, cybersecurity is a risk management issue and it involves people, process, and technology. As we take a look at what's been going on with the nation state actors going after election systems, their target isn't necessarily the technology. Their target is the people. It's the influencing the electorate. And I'd like to make sure that as we are looking to solve this cybersecurity problem, or at least buy down our risk, that we are spending money to make sure that we have an informed electorate to harden our people, uh, that we are investing in hardening our processes because it's a process. You, right. re you register, you go to the polls, or you uh, have a methodology of voting, right. then you tabulate and aggregate information. That's a process and that needs to be hardened as well. And then finally, the technology behind all of that needs to make sure that we have the integrity, the availability, and the non-repudiation of all of the information. People need to recognize they were the targets, the, trying to influence the hearts and minds of the American people, and that was a foul. Great. General, appreciate your insight. Thanks for stopping by and talking with us. Thanks, today. Greg. Always a pleasure. Thanks. For all of our videos, check out our YouTube channel, and for more on election security and all things cybersecurity, check out cyberscoop.com. I'm Greg Otto. Thanks for watching.